Good morning, everybody. This is uh, my video cast. I just wanted to touch base with people. And this will probably be a series of three videos. Um, I just want to get something off my chest as opposed to other people who have put their input in what's going on with this present election thing going on in the last year now we're trying to decide who who will become the next president to replace the illustrious Barack Obama the first black president and to me the worst black president I think uh, I don't think too highly of him and I'll tell you why uh, that will be my first video which should be today second video I will be talking about the Democratic personal candidate and that's Hillary Clinton and uh, the third one will be Donald Trump um, and then at the conclusion of that I will tell you who I will be endorsing um, for me myself but you are the captain of your own ship and you will have to make the best decision for you and your family and that's perfectly fine um, my only request is that you listen to both sides fairly do your homework um, look at both sides look at the Democratic and look at the Republican um, uh, Democratic Republican planks to see if these values that they have equal to what your values are what you seek and then um, for the next four years and it's very important that you vote and I definitely stress that you vote but there are some people out here doing trickery there's a lot of misunderstanding and then there's a lot of people who just don't care as long as they get their way so with that standing I'm just gonna say you just do your homework and then investigate as much as possible and keep an open mind but that mean don't be a closed mind a fool either because that's the reason why we got Barack Obama because we got the because we got broad spec we got broad swiped by all this hope and change and it didn't turn out to be hope and change it turned out to be more of a mess than what we got for believe me it was rough so with that saying I suggest you do some reading. Um, the first thing I would suggest you read is the Constitution, which gives us the rights and the abilities of the United States. Then you should look at the job description of what it is to be Commander in Chief. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, President is a very important job, but they don't know what the job description is. But, you, but be that as it may, you should know that the President works for you, not for himself. There should not be no I or me coming in somebody's sentences 140 times. When, that, when you have a lot of I and me, that person's a dictator. And you don't want that. That's a king. And that's the reason why this country is the set like it is. is because we didn't want no kingships. We don't want no king, queen, this, that, and the other. Because with that, when you have that, that person controls your life. And you don't have no life. This country was designed for freedom. So with that... You should read the Constitution. Really? I'll, people just say, look at it. I say, this is the Constitution. I got it right here in my wallet. But what it says. Then look at the job description what it says what the president does. And what he's supposed to be doing. Because this president says one thing and does another. Which is not right. Because under the Constitution, he has to follow the Constitution. Not what's up in here. Because this man's personality and what he has been designed to is not what we got he told us four years ago eight years ago that he's going to do this that and the other then we get in, in, into the position and then suddenly uh, I don't think that's right uh, well let me do this uh, and there's some people who just didn't stand up to him and that's why we're all in this mess right now so you should look at the constitution and look at the job description of the president and see what he's supposed to do because he works for us, not for him. He's not a king. No. You have a pen and a phone, but the reason you got a pen and a phone is because you got it from us. We have the true power. Not you. Not you, Mr. Pen and the Phone. Not you, Mr. President. Okay? So you need to get that straight. But you're not a dictator, okay? 
So, with that in mind, I'm going to tell you what I think of our president now. Our president now, you may turn me off. Go right ahead. Take your time. All right. But I'm just going to get this off my chest. I've been waiting eight years for this. Well, let's start off at the beginning. I didn't choose to vote for him, but everybody was like, oh, hope and change. First black president. Oh, my God. We got to have somebody in here that's going to take our side of this. Okay, well, you got what you want. Now, after eight years, what do you got? You got things worse. I live in Baltimore City. I live right up here. For the last week, somebody got shot five times in my neighborhood. I see all these black brothers out here with no jobs. All at two o'clock, I come through here, um, stopping on my on my second job. All I see is a lot of brothers out here just sitting around waiting for something to happen. They waiting for President Obama to get off his ass and give these people the jobs. No, he doesn't give us jobs. No, he wants to create more havoc, and that's exactly what we got. Instead of Hope and change, we got nothing. Black people, we got nothing. We don't have nothing. We got worse. In this last eight years, me, I'm a college-educated black man. I've lost money. I've lost over six to $8,000. And then I've only lost my job, too, because of this damn economy that he created. And he going to tell me, economy's going great at 1%. 1%. That's nothing. This comp this back when Reagan was was in power, we this country was growing at 13, 14, 15 percent. We had lots of people who were making money. We we're making money as lots of people had lots of jobs. And now look at it. We don't have nothing. Then you're gonna decide, well, we need to get these immigrants in here because they have money. No, they don't. These Mexicans or wherever the hell they coming from. First thing, they're illiterate. They don't even know what it is to, to speak their own language. So how are they going to come up here and try to run shop? And they don't know the English. They don't know nothing. They can't even wipe their behinds without help. And you're going to tell me we need it's these... It's 1 o'clock. You're going to tell me we need these, 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 these guys in here because they're going to help boost our economy? You, really? From what money? They don't know how to make money. They're illiterate. They don't know nothing about our language. Well, they're going to do the jobs that Americans won't do. Okay, well, that's great and that's fine. Well, let's understand that, but that's not all of it that's involved with this. you got to feed these people. you got to close these people. And where's that money going to come from? I know you're not giving up any money, Mr. President. Who's it going to come from? It's going to come from us. Excuse me, but this is not how America was. When our ancestors come up here, all we got was whips and chains, and then that was it. If you wanted some food, but you guys too to either grow it, or the master gave it to you, or you just got none. So how are you going to tell me that these immigrants should get everything handed to them? No. And I'd be damned if I feel like doing that. These people got to go out here and earn just like every, everybody else should, okay? Because that's what America's about. You have to earn to get yours. Well... Let me go back. I digress. I'm sorry. Well, let me just say, when Barack Obama first came, became president and uh, his inauguration day was here, I went to D.C. from my home in Baltimore, traveled, and uh, I was downtown D.C., and I had never had such an amazing experience of people getting together. I mean, it was... It was like Shangri-La. It was like Utopia, I'll tell you the truth. We had the black people over here. We had the white people over here. And they were intermingling. Everybody was friendly. Everybody was shaking hands and said, well, we got a black president. And it was, I mean, I had I had been in D.C. millions of times. But I had never had this overwhelming feeling of friendship, love. I don't know what, what I can try, but except for Utopia, well, the days prior to his elect, to him becoming the president of the United States. I mean, I had never had that kind of feeling from, from being in D.C. In downtown D.C., we had all the inauguration balls, the pre-walls and all that stuff. I mean, it was, it was magic. And you had all these people coming in from the South, from the North, and the white people, and the black people, and different people of, of color. It was amazing what these people came to. They came down there for one reason. They came there to see the first black president 
They wanted to see Barack Obama become president, and that's and that was fantastic. I mean, like I said, it was it was such a totally uplifting feeling. Now I look back eight and a half years now from that period, and I said, "What the hell happened? The wheels just fell off this bastard." Really, you got the black people against the white people. You got the white people against the black people. You got everybody up upset about everything. What happened, man? When you came into office, we, we thought that you were going to be the chosen one. You could walk on water. I, I heard black people saying that we won't have to pay our taxes. We won't have to. We won't have to pay for food. We won't have to do this. He'll calm the seas. He'll do everything. And and you won the the peace prize on the come. You didn't anything to sit your ass down in the White House. The next thing you know, they're giving you prizes because we had a lot of faith in you. Faith. And what is faith? Well, we believed in you because we were we were sold a bill of goods that turned out to be fraudulent. You were perpetrating a fraud. And that's what it is, a fraud. Because when you got into the office, you started doing things that you said you weren't going to do, but you started messing up. And then now, eight years later on, the economies, you can say, well, Bush did it. Well, excuse me, that was seven years ago. You're in charge of the economy now, man. That's that's on you. Then you're going to talk about, oh, my legacy, my legacy. Oh, 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 you should have thought about that when you got in the office, man. When you started changing stuff up. Oh, I believe that these laws that we have here for for immigration are wrong. Okay. I believe that these are wrong. Okay. Now, the previous presidents, I'm going to say that including Bill Clinton, including a lot of other presidents, Republican, Democrat, including the Senate and the House, all agree that these laws were just. But only you decide that these laws were not just. Okay, so my question to you would be, what is your basis of that? Because you decided that you got up on the left side of the bed instead of the right side of the bed and say, well, these laws are not right because I got up on the right side of the bed, so they're not, they, so not right. They got to be left. So these laws, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything about because I think they're not just. And I think we should have a national debate. Well, national debate, then you should have did something about that. You tried to force these laws with your pen and your phone. Hello, hello, anybody on the side there? Okay. But you can't do it that way because in America there's a process. And you, Like I said, we don't have kings, queens. But you want to be, but you're not. You want to be king of the world. But you're not. So... My thing to you is that you got to be, well, it's too late now because you you only got like two more months left, really. You, I mean, you're just laying duck, but you can still do some, some damage. But still, you know, I, I'm not your biggest fan, believe me. I, I'll be glad to see you and Michelle drift off into the, uh, into the next life. Not next life, but into your next, yeah, next life, your next station. Okay, so you get in that... 747 and fly you behind to Chicago, Borneo, Belize, or wherever you want to go so you can get out of here. So let some real people get some work done, really. Because I'm not feeling you, man. I'm not. I apologize if I'm hurting anybody's feelings, but these are my feelings. As an American, I can say that. But he's not been my man. So some things I, I, I can agree with him, with him, but that's very few and far between, really. So that's my comment on this man, and I wish him success. Then again, I don't wish him success. I just wished him well. That's how you say it. I wish him well in his future endeavors. So hopefully he'll stay out of my way and he'll continue to do whatever he needs to do in his one world because... His his background, his education, he's more of a Marxist. And also the one thing that I really didn't like about him is that he really down, did not like talking about America in a positive light. And then Michelle talking about 
oh, every day I live in the White House and this was slaves built this house, yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, guess what, honey? Nobody's telling you to live in the house. If you feel like you're in the house that you feel uncomfortable with, you feel like the slaves are bought in, then you can just take your big behind and just go somewhere else and you can lay down there. If you want to, you can go back to your house in Chicago and lay your big behind down there where you were somebody built it. It might not have been slaves, but somebody built your house. And I don't think you've been back in your house since you've been here. So you can just take your big behind back to Chicago and lay your head down there if you feel that the White House is too much of a threat for you, which is a pity because these people put a lot of money into this house. It's nice. I've never visited the White House, and I've seen it, and I know about its history, but it's a very nice. It's the people's house. So if you feel that you're offended by black people, white people, all these people working together, to build this house and you feel that you, that this house is not comfortable for you, as I said before, you can just get your ass up. Take your ass back home. That's it. I can't explain it to you any simple. You know, if you don't like the house, get your ass up. Take your ass back to your house. Yeah, you guys are paying mortgage over there. Take your ass over there. <laughs> End of story. But, anyway... That's my few minutes about this president. And I have a lot more, but I don't want to bore people. I mean, I've only talked for 15 minutes already. But in my opinion, you know, um, he'll go down as probably, for some people, he'll come down as the best thing since sliced bread. For me, he'll come down as, I would say, Woulda, coulda, shoulda, could have been better. Hope and change that just did not do anything. Underachiever. So that's it. My second video will be on Hillary Clinton, um, the uh, his choice for Secretary of the United States. So. I'm just going to say thank you very much for listening to my diatribe. Peace.